Personal notice. Danger's my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Company of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. First, if your car is equipped with an automatic transmission, let specially trained car savers check and drain and refill if necessary, according to your manufacturer's recommendation. Stop in for this convenient, dependable service at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Now, tonight's story, Uncle Harry's Bones, another adventure of George Valentine. My dear Mr. Valentine... You will please report to me at the Stedman Farm. That's two miles down the road from Pine Lake if you turn right at the Red Silk Post Office or the house with the unpainted shutters if you come over the hill. I want you to clearly understand that you're working for me, no matter what anybody says. And Lordy knows the people around here know how to say things. For instance, they all say Uncle Harry is their uncle, but he's not. He's mine and nobody else's. Mr. Valentine, please come quick. My trouble is I don't know if Uncle Harry is Uncle Harry or somebody else's who's not important. I've got to find out. Now, don't you think? Sincerely, Sophie Sturdivant. Hey, friend. Hey, you. What's your trouble? Hello. We're looking for the Sturdivant place. Oh, we're down the road, past the hill. If you're looking for Doc Sellers, he's just gone into town, I think. Doc Sellers? Who's he? No, it's Sophie Sturdivant we wanted to see. Oh, Sophie. Her. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Eh, nothing. Doc's your brother. He's all right. Well, what's the matter with her? Nothing. Okay, thanks. Look out for your foot. Hey, hold up, hold up. Don't see many strangers around here. Where are you from? Looney Bin? Uh, Looney Bin? Sure. Eh, Sophie's all right. What are you driving at, Buster? My name's Dorky. What are you driving at? Say, so tell me something. Where does Sophie's Uncle Harry live? Who? Uncle Harry. Some kind of a character around here, I get it. Nope. No Uncle Harry around here. But she wrote... Uh, look, was... this is a nice, peaceful place. People don't like strangers making trouble. None of my business, none of yours. Let well enough alone, I say. You'll live longer. Places around here seem to be, George. Yeah. Red Silk, I figured that out. Used to be a big breeding farm up in this neck of the woods. I don't know how people are living now. Mrs. Sturdivant? The door's open. She's probably out back in the kitchen. Uh-huh. Mrs. Sturdivant? Sophie! Hmm. She's not in the kitchen, George. Of course she isn't. Huh? Oh, what do you think does the cooking around here, anyway? Oh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. We didn't mean to walk right in. You must in. be Doc Sellers. Well, I ain't Abraham Lincoln. You looking for Sophie? Uh Uh-huh. I'm George Valentine. This is Miss Brooks. I've seen your car out there. Just come in myself. Hey, sis! Come to the party. You're a doctor, are you? Sure, sure. (laughs) Want a pill? (laughs) Here. Oh. (laughs) Pretty good size, huh? (laughs) No, I haven't practiced for years, but I still got these. I was over trying to unchoke a neighbor's horse yesterday. Eminent sawbones, that's me. Uh Uh-huh, you're a vet. Yep. Retired livestock killer. Sophie! Hey, Soph! Well, upstairs, I guess, working on a butterfly collection. Come on through. Sophie, for the love... Hey. You must have fallen down the stairs, George. I'm all right. I'm Here, all right. get her over to the couch. I'm all right. Um, Ziox, what'd you do? Trip over your own feet? Oh, here, let me. She didn't fall downstairs. Huh? Yes, I did. 
That's what I must have done. But how did your face get those blotches on it? How'd you get that black eye? Uh, no one hit me. What'd you say that for? I mean, I, I fell, that's all. Look, did somebody slap you, knock you no, down? No, 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 no. Well, who was it? Why? When did it happen? Oh, stop it. Stop it. Now. We've come to help you, Sophie. So why won't you tell us what... Oh. Huh? Huh? What are you looking at me for? No reason. Just wondered why she's still so scared. Oh, no, that's ridiculous. Doc's my brother. Oh, hey, Douglas! Douglas, come on in here. Is Douglas with you? Yeah, I just got back from looking at the old office. Oh, what did you find? Nothing, not a blame thing. Oh, look, both of you, what are you talking about? Yes, Doc, what is it? What do you want? Hey, Valentine, Miss Brooks, Douglas Kent. Just so you know, I'm not the kind of man beats up his own sister. Uh, how do you do? Hi. I... Sophie, what's happened? I'm all right, Douglas. Doug, here's another crazy, eager beaver like Sophie is, Mr. Valentine. Going off half cock whenever he gets... Mr. Valentine's here to help us. Isn't that right, Sophie? He's here to help find out. Oh, look. Will somebody please explain what this is all about? No. No, I... I think that perhaps I was wrong. What? Mr. Valentine, I shouldn't have been so hasty in writing. Uncle Harry, that's what it's all about. Uncle Harry? No. No. Douglas and I only thought... Oh, be quiet, Sophie. You started it, let's finish it. Come here, I'll show him to you. Show him? Uncle Harry, the great Uncle Harry, so they say. Yeah, see for yourself. <gasps> skeleton. Nothing but a skeleton. Uncle Harry's bone. Says you. I was out fishing in the lake, Mr. Valentine, and my line got tangled, and here he is. But just a skeleton. I don't see how you can tell. Who was Uncle Harry? Man disappeared five years ago. Man who bought out the breeding farms, a hermit. Sophie's uncle. Uh huh. Well, look, I don't know much about anatomy, but is a shin bone supposed to look like this? Well, go on, Doc. Tell him. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Jump to conclusions. Yeah. I made the mistake of remembering that I once set a fracture for Harry, that's all. It's what I get for playing MD. We've been downtown looking for the x rays in Doc's old office. We were going to the barn, too, to check in his old trunks and things. You see, I thought that if we could find the x-ray that he took five years ago, it might give us a positive way of identifying... Bones the... are bones. It's not going to tell you anything. How about this? A piece of rusty wire tangled around his leg. George. Well, the lake is full of stuff. It don't mean anything either. But it means something if we knew his leg was tied with wire before he died. Exactly, Mr. Valentine. That's just the way yeah, I... Yeah, see, everybody who reads mysteries goes off half-cocked. Well, what kind of a skeptic are you, Doc? Why don't you think it's Uncle Harry? Mister, I don't think one way or another. Only lots of people come up summers to fish in that lake. Could be practically anybody. Okay, Doc, I'm going to go with you to keep looking for that x-ray. Douglas, get the local sheriff up here as fast as you can. And tell him to send for a police x-ray man, too. Brooksy, take care of Sophie. Look, I I'm just as upset about Sophie as don't you are. Don't bother, Doc. I finally got the idea. It's a skeleton in the closet we're after. Well, come on, then. We're going to start opening doors. Yeah, wouldn't have set the blame leg in the first place if there was a real sawbones around. Last a bunch of recluses in this part of the woods. Yes, sir. Did you try this box here? Old Sears Roebuck catalogs. Yeah. Blast you cobwebs. Hey, how about the tin one? Uh, oh, yeah, let me see. Your x-ray stuff ought to be boxed up somewhere that you could find hey, it. Hey, Doc, where are you? Oh, is that you, Sheriff? Right here. Yeah. Come here, meet Mr. Valentine. We're some cleaning out an old attic. Hi. Don't stick your paw at me, young man. Wow, wow, wow. What's your trouble, Sheriff? Don't you like to know what's going on in your territory? I know all about it. Don't need any city boys to come telling me what my job is. Uncle Harry disappeared five years ago. Let's leave him that way, I say. Ah, uh -huh. you're not interested in skeletons, huh? Sheriff, I think I'd like to have a little talk with oh, you before we... Oh, quit your blabbing and give us your pocket knife. Hmm. Oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah, airtight box. Maybe you got it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, that looks like negatives. That... Hey, look out for that spider. <laughs> yeah, open up closets. Got to expect being bit. Here. Let's see. Uh-huh. Oh, that's... That's a horse, isn't it? Uncle Harry, horse, spider, what difference does it make? Uncle... There you are. Yeah, name, date, chin bone. Yeah, that's him, all right. Here, let's get it in the light. Hey, 
Well, Doc? It could be the same as the skeleton. Yeah, looks the same to me. Set crooked on top there. Like a hundred others, I suppose. Holy smokes, Mr. Valentine, I can't tell for Sheriff, sure. Sheriff, did you get that police x-ray man? Yeah, over at the house. Mr. Kennedy. Okay, give me that x-ray. Come on. Absolutely, there's no question about it. But isn't it true lots of people have broken bones, Kennedy? I'll be glad to swear before a jury that this is the same bone. Before a jury? Of course, Mr. Valentine. Hasn't anyone here noticed the fracture in the skull? Mm. Here, right here. Why, no. Enough to cause death, I should say, in that location. I will also testify that the fracture must have been made before the body became a skeleton. In other words, the x-ray proves it's Uncle Harry. Precisely. And the combination of fracture and wire around the legs unquestionably proves that he was murdered. There you are. Quite simple. Murder. Uncle Harry, all right, Sheriff, but the important thing is who did sure, it. Sure, sure, Sophie. Now me and Mr. Valentine have... Wait a minute, to... listen to her. Young it. lady, I've known Sophie for years, and anything... But she, she knows who killed him. She what? Of course I do. And I always knew it had happened, too. And that's why I hired you, Mr. Valentine, to catch him. Somewhere in Manitoba, Canada, I think, was the last place. You know, he sends me checks. You see, that's because he feels guilty about the way he treats me. Yeah, he was a skin flint, a miser, a bloodsucker. I've sent descriptions. I've had detectives after him lots of times, but they've never been able hey, to catch him. Wait a minute, him. wait a minute, please, both of you. She's talking about her husband, George, her second well, husband. He only married me because of Uncle Harry's money, and I was the relative. But Uncle Harry was too smart for him. He'd never give him any. Oh, no, not him. Sophie, why do you... Bunker, his name is, and when you find him, you'll hang him, won't you, Mr. Valentine? I know Bunker did it. He always said he got Harry's money. And five years ago, he did it, don't you see? And then he disappeared. Hold it, hold it, would you please? This Bunker, what happened? Was he a husband that ran away from you? <gasps> I beg your pardon? I sent him away, don't you understand? He was no good, and I sent him away. That's why I'm using my first husband's name. Bunker was a lying cheat, and he killed Uncle Harry, and I sent him away before I knew what he'd done. <laughs> well, get him, that's all. Get him and hang him. <laughs> And now, Valentine, will you listen to the voice of reason for a minute? Bunker ran away from Sophie in San Francisco, but it was two months before Uncle Harry disappeared. Oh. Sophie's just a little cracked on the subject, that's all. As I figure, Bunker's the one person probably didn't kill Uncle Harry. Forget him. What do you mean? Lonely area around here. Anything can happen. Nobody will be able to remember. Five years is a long time. Mm -hmm. It's been nice and peaceful since... Valentine, I mean Harry was the man who ruined this place. He was old Harry himself. I mean, if I'd had the chance, I probably would have murdered him. Maybe I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I understand it all now. It isn't just the skeleton in her closet, is it? Nope. Yeah, Sophie wanted me to prove it was Uncle Harry so she could prove it was her no-good husband who did it. Instead, now we've got to solve a five-year-old crime that everybody else would have to have hushed up. Because everybody in the whole area is a suspect for murder. And you know who'll get the last laugh? <laughs> Uncle Harry's bones. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. musical scale has eight notes. A musician can hardly use the scale unless it has not one, not two, but all eight notes. In gasoline, it takes eight different qualities to give you all-around dependable performance. Now, gasolines can be designed to play up one quality at the expense of others, but that unbalances the overall performance. If a musician makes one note in a scale sharp without adjusting the others, you hear this. Something slightly off? 
Well, that's what you'd find in an unbalanced gasoline, but not in Chevron Supreme. Chevron Supreme gasoline gives you not one, not two, but all eight top performance qualities. Just what are those eight qualities? Here they are. Area blending quality, mileage, power, anti-knock quality, vapor lock prevention, starting quality, warm-up quality, acceleration. These are the eight qualities that mean dependable performance in your car. Count on Chevron Supreme to give you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities. For sweet music under the hood of your car, wherever you drive in the West, ask for Chevron Supreme gasoline at standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. It seems your client, Sophie, is the only one who ever liked Uncle Harry. Everyone else, including the sheriff, would prefer to let sleeping dogs lie. And if your name is George Valentine, you know how hopeless it will be to try to solve a five-year-old crime when everyone in town is a suspect. Sheriff Harry was a miser, wasn't he? A hermit and a miser. What are you getting at? I don't know. Gold. Misers have gold, don't they? Of course they do. If they're smart, like Harry was. Well, sure, that's why he was killed, I guess. What do you mean? Well, most of his money was in property, but people always said he had a good many thousand dollars stashed away somewhere. Somewhere like where? Ooh, up around that place of his. I could never find any, and I'm the one who boarded the place up after he disappeared. Oh, Uncle Harry's place, you mean You mean there's a house, a farm or something? It's a cabin. Nothing but a cabin. Well, come on, Brooksy, what are we waiting for? About a mile around the lake from here. I boarded her up solid in case he ever came back. George, what about Sophie? Never mind her. Now I know who smacked her. much of a cabin for a rich man, is it? No. We are. I don't know. At least he kept it neat and clean. Turn your flashlight over here. Oh. Just a desk, that's all. You think there's any point in going through it? Not if you're looking for money. Listen. Oh, it's just the wind, I guess. Hey, wait, Brooksy. What? A brick out of the fireplace. Yeah, a nice little hole underneath. Oh. Maybe Uncle Harry did have some money. Sure, of course he did. What's the matter? Hole in the mattress. Place for a box. Or... Pete, look out. Oh, I tripped. <laughs> well, there's nothing funny about it. Yes, there is. Loose board, Angel. This place is honeycomb with old hiding spots. Yeah. All of them empty. Look. Look, here's a coin. This one wasn't empty. I mean, once upon a time. None of them were from the looks of it. I mean, that doesn't quite make sense, does it? What do you mean, George? Yeah, what a kind of tough old guy that Harry must have been. I don't... Duck, duck, Angel. What? Get down, get down. Turn off that flashlight. George. Take it easy now. This is who I think it is. The man with the shovel. I can see him in the Shh. doorway. All right, shut the door, Buster. There's a dram. Uh, Never mind the match. George, look out for the shovel. Get away from me. All right, I guess now we can have some light, Angel. Well, it's our neighbor. What's your name? Dorky, is that right? Let go of me. Sure, sure, I'll let go. The man who warned us away, the man who said Sophie was the just... The man who ridiculous. warned Sophie away, you mean? What? I did not. You got mad and hit her, too. That's assault. Now, look, listen to All me. All a matter of geography. I remember what she wrote me about the two roads. And Doc Sellers and Douglas went to town this morning. That's in the other direction from your place by the hill. So how did you know that Doc had gone to town? He wouldn't have gone past you. That's the wrong direction. So I guess you knew he was gone because you'd been over there. Sophie herself must have told you where he was. All right. Don't prove anything. No, but your shovel does. I wondered why a guy who'd committed murder five years ago would be stupid enough to commit an overt act today. Murder? Now, look, I hated Uncle Harry, I sure, but I... didn't say you did, did I? Relax, relax, Buster. 
You're just a little greedy, that's all. Come digging for the miser's cash. George, I don't understand. When people thought Uncle Harry disappeared, they'd naturally assume he took his loot with him. Now it seems he was murdered. That makes it a little different. Nobody alive would be smart enough to kill him and find all of it. An old cowhide skin flint like that. I know, I know. That's why you wanted Sophie to stop raising alarm. If everybody knew for sure Uncle Harry was dead, why, you'd get trampled in the rush up here. He built me out of some of my property. You can't blame me Buster, for Buster, I'm he... not blaming you for anything. That's not my job. Now get out. Go on. Go home. George, what on earth... Come on, come on. You heard me. There isn't any gold around here. Well, what's the matter, Angel? Don't you understand? We're all through with this case. Sure, coroner. There's not much to say. I've given my testimony. He's identified the body. That's all we need from Doc Sellers. Well, Sheriff, who has got something to say? I understood this fellow, Valentine, had caught somebody up at Uncle Harry's shack. I know this isn't a court, but we sure want to hear everything that... I haven't got anything to add, coroner. Now, see here, Valentine. No, no, coroner. I'm all through with this case. Yeah, I'm on my way back to the city. Valentine. Yeah, yeah, what was the idea back there at the, at the inquest? There's no idea, Doc. Well, see here, if you think our sheriff is kidding... The sheriff's we'll... all right, Douglas. Yeah, big compliment. Yeah, he only wishes it were true. All right, now listen, all of you. Uncle Harry was a heel. The whole town wished him dead. Sheriff, when the skeleton was found, your idea was to let sleeping dogs lie. Huh? Well, not exactly, but holy smoke, we got to live with the people you know. This place has been pretty nice for the past five years. Well, then... We'll take care of Dorky, all right. For but... assault, that's all, Sheriff. That's your business. Yeah, but now I got a murder to solve. You help get this rolling, you can't just walk all off. All right, and... all right. Keep your shirt on, Sheriff. You won't have to nail anybody in your town for murder. But you said that the... Well, mur- let's start at the beginning. Five years ago. Uncle Harry, the hermit, the miser, the boy with the gold. Somebody comes and tries to get his gold. Kills him, takes his gold. But you've been up to the cabin, Sheriff. How did the killer find all the loot... In at least three separate hiding spots. Well, he could have twisted the old boy's arm or dug around. Nothing was disturbed. He went right to the spots. Yeah, I remember. And if he got rough with Harry, would Harry have told him where all the spots were? Well, no. I see what you mean. No, you don't, Douglas. Maybe Sophie's an unhappy, bitter woman, but uh, she had the right idea. Sheriff sent some telegrams to, uh, where was it she got her last money order from? Someplace in Manitoba, Canada? Bunker, that, that no good husband of hers, he's the one. Bunker? Well, I grant you he could have come up here after he left Sophie in San Francisco. I guess nobody would have known if he was out at Harry's place. Yeah, but she's had detectives looking for Bunker, tracing those little, those little money orders he sent once in a while. Well, that's right. They ain't been able to find him, Valentine. Okay, okay. But, Doc, you wouldn't be able to lie about x-rays of anybody who's still around here, would you? I mean, right out in public court and all? No, 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 you couldn't do that. You'd be caught up. What are you talking about? Perjury. I waited just long enough for you to commit perjury at the coroner's inquest, Doc. Well, what are you... What are you talking about? A tin box with a live spider in it. Spider? Yeah, that's what gave me the idea, and it's the only way to explain everything. Suppose the spider got in there when the box was open, say, a few days ago. By Doc alone. You're crazy. No more than your sister is. Suppose you switch some x-rays... We'll tie that together, what I said about Uncle Harry's hiding places. There's only one person who could have gone right to the hiding places. And that's Uncle Harry himself. No, now look... But he couldn't do that if he were dead, could he? All right, then. Suppose Doc here once treated a fracture for Bunker. Bunker? Yeah. Oh, boy, that would... Yeah, hey. simple as that. Five-year-old crime. Man killed another man, threw him in the lake. And now, because his sister would inherit some property and so on, Doc decides to make the skeleton into Uncle Harry. When it's really the skeleton of Bunker. That's not true. Now, Sheriff, you've got to believe me. Perjury, I Doc. Do... Perjury, remember? Uh, but, Sheriff, I think the reason detectives haven't been able to trace Bunker is pretty simple now, don't you? Wrong description. Just send a description to Canada of Uncle Harry. They'll get him all right. <laughs> and there you are, Sheriff. Instead of just a bunch of bones, Uncle Harry is a real live murderer. Uncle Harry? Well, I'll... Hey, Valentine, wait a minute. Where are you going? Back to the gal what brung me. Sophie. 
Yeah, there's a lot more important stuff to clear up in this case than dead skeletons. Yeah, Sheriff, I got a live client to drag out of her closet. A gal who hired me and then slammed doors in my face. Why? Well, in a couple of seconds, I'll find out. New RPM motor oil is the finest engine insurance you can buy. Compared with today's premium type motor oils, as designated by the American Petroleum Institute, new RPM cuts in half the wear rate of critical engine parts. No wonder in the toughest test a motor gets, new RPM doubles engine life between major overhauls due to lubrication. As for it, at independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations where they say, and mean, we take better care of your car. He hated Harry. Bunker hated Harry. Sure, Sophie. He must have come here to get some money out of Harry, and, well, Harry defended himself, I guess. It's been sweet of Uncle Harry to send me the money orders all this time, even if it is trapping you. Mm, I wouldn't be too sure it was sweet. It's kept the illusion that Bunker was still alive. He'd do that on purpose. Oh, yes, perhaps. In fact, I wouldn't be too sure you love that uncle as much as you claim. I think you just hated Bunker. But now Bunker's dead. Now you know he's dead. People can waste a lot of time hating, can't they? Oh, Sophie, I'll tell you something. You wasted a lot of our time before I caught on why you hired me, then didn't want to talk. Well, I, I told you you were working. Well, I didn't think it was just Dorky's getting rough. It was the fact you began to remember whose leg had really been fractured, wasn't it? Well, I, I couldn't understand what the doc was up to. <laughs> I'm so glad it was only perjury. Makes me feel much better. He'd been willing to wait another two years. You might have had Uncle Harry declared legally dead and collected his property that way. Yeah, but Doc wouldn't wait, that's all. Too good an opportunity. <laughs> and the ironic part is, if it had worked, Uncle Harry couldn't have done anything about the inheritance slipping away from him. Not without admitting the whole story. Well, I can see why Doc was tempted already. Right. Doc hated Harry. Such a waste of time. You said that before. About hatred being a waste of time. I collect butterflies, you know. People say I have about as much brains as one. But anybody who wastes time is uh, crazy. Uh, sure, butterflies, I suppose so, yeah. <laughs> He's stupid, isn't he? <laughs> Doesn't learn any lessons from seeing what happens from, from an unhappy marriage. Don't worry, Sophie, I'm the teacher. What? Hey, what is this? Come along, George. Time to say goodnight. Oh, now you haven't seen my butterfly collection. You come upstairs with me and I'll show you my real <laughs> Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey has starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by Don Clark. Loreen Tuttle was heard as Sophie, Larry Dobkin as Doc, Don Diamond as Douglas, Joe Duvall as the Sheriff, and Fred Howard as Dorky. The music is composed and presented by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>